Today is not a day of preaching. Just a day of presence and acknowledgement. The past six days have been very, very refreshing in matters of revelation about the Holy Spirit as helper. We came upon very deep, insightful deposits of the word. Spiritual orphan. The concept and the reality of spiritual orphan and spiritual parenting. What it means to be parented. And this morning I saw a message on my phone from a daughter, one of my very dear children. <clears throat> she is in Lagos and part of the assembly in Lagos. And she sent me a message because she she's bomba to bomba in connection of what God is doing and acknowledging spiritual parenting, being parented through the grace of God working in us. So as I, as I attempted to teach this week, I came to a clearer understanding of spiritual parenting. God parenting us, bringing us up. Parenting is about bringing forth and bringing up. Sometimes those who bring us forth, who beget us, are not those who bring us up. Sometimes those who bring us up also are those who bring us forth. But God does both. And every time God brings somebody forth, somebody, forth, somebody is begotten by God, God uses, first of all, a man, his son, Jesus. And then he uses an instrument that is human. So when God has used a human agent to bring you forth in his son, through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Yes, God is your father. But that person also has the role of spiritual parenting. Parenting you in the father. So one can say, this is my father in the Lord. In that sense. Because the word is so abused these days that it lacks every meaning. That it is through the instrumentality, the ministry of this person, the work of God through this person, that the Son of God adopted me unto the Father. So I have God as my Father, thanks to the human instrumentality of this person. So that person can be said to be a father in the Lord. If it is a woman, if we can be called a mother in the Lord, it's still about the bringing forth. It may have been that somebody, you had been brought forth, begotten by God through his son, but in the administration and ministry and instrumentality of a different person, but somebody else brings you up, brings you up, brings growth, Brings the help of growth in counsel, in teaching, in instruction, in leadership, in wellness, spiritual health, <coughs> insight and vision. Thereby facilitating your growing up in the constant renewal of your mind and the enjoyment of everything pertaining to godliness, to life and godliness in Christ. That person also has the qualification of being a spiritual parent. And such people are people to be given the honor, the respect, the appreciation. That is due the office of parenthood. There is no way you will see God as your father. But you will see those he has used to father you. In the administration of the spirit. The spirit uses people. So it's just to give it to you as a gift. That whoever. Through whom you came forth. In the life of God. In Christ Jesus. Make sure that person has a unique place in your life. 
And in whatever way, once in a while, you can make attempts deliberately to honor, intentionally to acknowledge. It is very important. And then, one whom in any season God uses to bring you up, do the same thing. Why is that important? Because issue of bringing up for those who have been following the teachings and very few people were here. But the good thing is that they are all available as teachings, available in the media or you go on social media and see day after day how you help yourself. Because issue of being brought up is everything. Somebody who is begotten by a king but it's not brought up by a king but brought up by a doubt will never have the full expression of kingship. Or somebody who is brought up by parents who are noble and glorious but has not grown up remains a baby. Surely that person as a baby cannot represent the ones who have brought him forth and cannot benefit from the inheritance what is made available to him or to her as a result of being brought forth that is begotten by the one who is noble. So the problem we have in Christianity is that many people claim to be born again means to be brought forth by God, but they are not brought up. You cannot enjoy what you have not grown up to the stage of God. Enjoy. When I was a, a, young, a young boy, I must have been like 15, 16, in Ubeneka, in Cameroon, there was this young man from my community, larger part of the community, who was far younger than myself, he must have been like 12 or 13, but he was married. He was the only son of the family and they got another girl of almost his age for him because they wanted in a hurry to make sure they would have children. So this young boy, just very young, he was younger than I was, but he was a married person. We used to see him. One foolish young boy moving around in the neighborhood, but married. I would like to know how his life is like now, whether they are still married. Because it was a wonderful cultural thing, but not a wonderful thing in terms of progress. Marriage is not for children. It's for those who have grown up. It's a right of those who have grown up. So many things that are the rights of grown-ups in God are not available to church goers. So if you sit down here, you can remember when you, you were baptized and the first time you received your carries in your church. That was like 50 something years ago. That was like 40 something years ago. But right now, you are not older than an infant in the household. You cannot operate anything. You cannot be trusted with anything because you have not grown up. That is why God sent us to you. So that through the administration of the word of God in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you can grow up into your inheritance. Let me share with you in the next 20 minutes by the grace of God, the league meetings will have to take place. We have had great pleasure in the sight of God. But let's have a few words so that you can go with something as you feast in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about the person that God uses. The person God uses. Let's look at a portrait of a person that God uses. It's going to be a very brief expository word. Who is the person that God uses? First of all, let's talk about who God does not use. God does not use an orphan. 
I know this is provocative. This is going to trouble you because some of you, you are very, very happy to say you are an orphan. You are so proud of your status as orphan now that you have heard that God does not use orphan. I'm sure you will be wondering, so what does I, am I, is it my fault that my father died, my mother died? Well, it's not your fault, but the truth is that God doesn't use an orphan. Just that the orphan I'm talking about is not orphan that you are thinking about. It's not an orphan in the sense of somebody whose father, biological, mother, biological, died. That's not the person I'm talking about. That one is a very simple one. That's not the real issue with orphan. God does not use a spiritual orphan. And for those who have been part of the teachings for six days, I don't need to stress. They have understanding. They have grown past that. For those of you who were online on the Christ radio, trusting you benefited. For those of you who did not connect, who don't know, trusting help will come to you. So God does not use a spiritual orphan. So who is a spiritual orphan? John chapter 14 verse 15 to 18 that we have been considering will give us opportunity to explore who an orphan is. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper. So a spiritual orphan is the one who does not have another helper. Another helper beyond his father. Another helper beyond his mother. Another helper beyond her boyfriend or his girlfriend. Another helper beyond a sugar mommy and a sugar daddy. Another helper beyond a father in the Lord and a mother in the Lord. Another helper beyond my papa and my bishop. Another helper beyond the man, the woman, the boss who favors you, the politician. Who knows you? Say, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. We had made explanation and deep detailed teaching on another and helper that he may abide with you forever. That means you will have help. An orphan is one without help. One without physical help. Whether he has a father or mother who is in the village or in the city. But if that one has no help of comfort from that father or mother, has no help of counsel, no help of intercession, of teaching, of guidance, of leadership, of encouragement, that one is an orphan. So many of you see that here, though you have father and mother, maybe they are in the city, and some of you are living in the same houses with them, they have no value to be added to your life in terms, in terms of counsel. They have nothing to add to you in, in guidance, in leadership. Some of them, they are the problem you have. Some of them, they have programmed you to fail in marriage because they are failing in marrying your mother or marrying your father. So they are fathers who are not fathers. They are mothers who are not mothers. They are the opposite of father and mother because they have no help to give you. But that's not a problem. That does not disqualify you from being used by God. The real orphan is the one who does not have the help of the Spirit of God. The one who is not helped by the Spirit of God to bring, to have comfort. The one who does not have comfort from the Spirit of God. The one who does not have counsel from the Spirit of God. The one that the Spirit of God is not an advocate unto him or her. The one that the Spirit of God is not interceding for him or her. The one that the Holy Spirit is not teaching. The one that the Holy Spirit is not guiding. The one that the Holy Spirit is not leading. That one is the spiritual orphan. And God does not use anyone that does not have the help of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the greatest mistake that has ever been made in church, that has been made in church, and that will be made in church, is giving leadership, position, and ministry to somebody who is an alien to the help of the Holy Ghost. That person is a Confucianist, an agent of destruction. 
You find them as ordained bishop. Find them as ordained priests. And ordained, ordained pastors and apostles. They have mighty titles. But they are not helped by the Holy Ghost. They don't have counsel from the Holy Ghost. They are not taught by the Holy Ghost. They are not guided by the Holy Ghost. And the prayer we have to pray for GFCC this season is God that God will deliver us from the hands of people in positions and responsibilities of leadership but are not helped by the Holy Ghost. They don't hear from God. They are not taught. They are not informed. They don't perceive from the Holy Ghost. They don't see from the Holy Ghost. They are the people who see through the prism of their ego. They see according to how mighty they are in their eyes and how mighty they feel they should be treated. Everything is about them. About their little experience, about their past, their present and their future, their aspiration. God does not use somebody who does not have the help of the spirit. So God does not use a spiritual orphan. Who does God use? God uses whom he comforts. So when God wants to use you, he brings you close. By adoption in Christ Jesus, you are saved. And by the Holy Ghost, he brings you comfort. Brings you comfort in the sense that no matter how hopeless and useless your past will have been, but by the help of the Holy Ghost, he brings you comfort and brings you and rehabilitates you, restores you and gives you confidence and boldness and courage such that you are no longer the story of your past, but you are the story of his help. He comforts you. He encourages you. He gives you fresh heart. He strengthens you. He emboldens you. For the spirit that we receive is not a spirit of timidity. It's not a spirit of fear. It's not a spirit of bondage causing us to fear. But it's the spirit. That spirit is the spirit of the son. The spirit that cries out, Abba, Father. So God uses the one whom his spirit comforts. God uses the one whom his spirit counsels. God uses the one whom his spirit teaches. God uses the one whom his spirit instructs. God uses the one whom his spirit prepares and equips. God uses whom he guides and leads. Let's go back to that scripture. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper who will comfort you, who will guide you, who will lead you, who will equip you, who will teach you, who will instruct you, who will comfort you and encourage you and embolden you and strengthen you and makes you wise. The spirit of truth who will lead you into the fullness of the truth. The fullness of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor, is, nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you. And will be in you. Verse 18. I will not leave you orphans. I will count. Peter that was used. Paul that was used. Was a Paul that was first of all comforted by the Holy Spirit. Peter denied the master. But when the spirit came, he comforted him. The first day that Peter spoke as an apostle, after the Pentecost, there was no iota of inferiority complex, of low self-esteem, of shame and fear. The spirit comforted him. The spirit healed him. The spirit took away the memory of his failure. The spirit replaced his past with his future in Christ. Until you are comforted by the Spirit of God, you are a disaster to the plan of God. Peter stood up. The same Peter that denied, P, that denied Jesus, that on the day of destiny, he brought out a sword and cut off not the head of somebody, but only the ear of somebody. That Peter would stand before councils and say, choose for yourself which one is better, to fear you and look at you, by the way, or to fear God. And the scriptures say when they had examined them and noticed their boldness, they realized they had been with him. What that means is that they have been helped by his spirit. They have been comforted by his spirit. They have been taught, instructed and made bold and equipped, clothed by his spirit. That's the person God uses. God does not use a person that has never made a mistake. God has never used, does not use someone who is immaculate. immaculate in the sense of no bad record. If you check the record of that person has never made any mistake, has never talked nonsense, has never done nonsense. Those are not the usable people. The usable people are those 
after their nonsense and rubbish, they have been helped by the Spirit, cleansed up by the Spirit, healed by the Spirit. So you dare not allow anybody to use your past against you because your past was an opportunity for you to be helped by God. And it's only the one who is helped by God that he can use to help others. Paul writing to the Corinthians in his second letter, said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has comforted us in every sorrow. So that with the same comfort with which he has comforted us, we can comfort those who are in trouble. Until you have been comforted, you cannot be used in the ministry of comforted, comforting. Until you have been reconciled, you cannot be used for reconciliation. Until you have been taught, you cannot be used to teach. Until you have been healed, you don't understand healing. Until you have been saved, you cannot be used for saving, for salvation. Sir, God uses those he helps, not often. And when I'm talking about being used by God, I'm sure a lot of you, everybody talks about being used by God is raising the dead, healing the sick, prophesying and seeing vision. God is looking for people to use in the business space. I see that here, so many of you, very intelligent but very poor. The only sickness you have, is God wants to use you. So when we hear God wants to use people, everybody wants to go and preach. They don't for come. God wants to use you in wealth creation. The one God uses in wealth creation is the one he helps. Tell you come to church and be taught so that you can be helped by the spirit to, to add that to your knowledge and skill set in business to receive the wealth of God. Every one of you that's seated here, you've been, you've come over, but I mean get business, I mean get business. God does not help you from with his business, uh, with the manna from heaven. He helps you by the Holy Ghost. When the time of teaching is a time of being helped, just because these words I speak to you, they are spirits. They are the life you need. The problem we have is that we don't want to be helped, but we want to be helped. God wants to first of all help you, teach you, instruct you, counsel you, direct you, lead you in his ways, the ways of his wealth on earth, the way of his influence and then he will put a seed in your hand and grow it into a mighty industry. There's so much poverty in the church. There is no problem with poverty of the pocket. The problem we have is the poverty of the spirit. Poverty of the head. Not knowing the plan of God. Not knowing the ways of God. And being resistant, stiff neck. That you don't even want to be taught. You despise knowledge. You despise opportunity to grow. So you resist being helped by God. And thereby foreclosing the opportunity of being used by God. When last did we have somebody amongst us who started business the, the past six months, the past one year, you started a business and it's doing well. I want to see your hand. Well, after now, come and see me. Started business the past two years. Everybody's sitting and waiting for somebody to come and help them. Everybody's looking for help. But God wants to help you in order to raise you. When you sit in the presence of God and listen to revelation and insight, he drops words, instructions for you. A young woman gave testimony in the school of the Holy Spirit. And during these six days, she's been coming from Ecore when she sits through. Why? She has come to test firsthand what it means to prosper from God. Woman, the husband, their business packed up. The husband, out of job, nothing. Desperate. And whatever she was doing was so poor and discouraging. Because when you don't have, and what you do is not promising, it is breaking. And she was thinking of abandoning what she was doing at the time. Because it didn't make sense. But she's been instructed in the school of the Holy Spirit. And one of the covenants we had, we have, is in wealth. And she sat down. In a moment of encounter with the Holy Ghost like we have had. And the Holy Spirit told her, 
that thing you are doing, keep doing it. It means help has come to turn it into something else. The same thing you have been doing, keep doing it. This was in December. By March, they are counting millions and they are employing people permanent basis and casual workers on a daily basis. In three months, she had been comforted, taught, counseled, helped, equipped, and now in the process of being used. So at least there are few people among billions of people on earth who look up to the business in their hands at the end of the month to have their own livelihood. In three months, that difference, who told you that it takes God anything to change your condition? He needs an opportunity with you to help you. That's why the Holy Ghost is on earth. And he says he will abide with you forever. So if you see me dance on a day like this, I lose my mind. It's a long time I lost my mind. Like David will say, I'm dancing unto the God while responding to the insult of Micah. I'm dancing to the God who took kingship from your father and gave to me. I'm dancing to the God who takes rubbish and comforts rubbish, encourages rubbish, builds, counsel, teaches, instructs rubbish and uses rubbish to help other rubbish. Isn't that wonderful? I challenge you, make yourself available to be helped by God. Make yourself teachable and available for teaching, for counsel. As long as you are wise in your heart, your condition will last. Why? If it depends on God, God starts helping you by teaching you, informing you, guiding you, shaping you, equipping you, comforting you, changing you, refreshing you, renewing you, and then he will give you the next level. Because if you are not equipped, anyone that is not equipped cannot function. That is why in the banking industry now, we see people study microbiology as, as managers. In the banking industry, we see people who study anatomy, zoology, as branch managers. Why? Because it's not about what you study. Now, university education is just to make people literate. Then when you are, when a job opportunity comes up, what happens? They help you first before they use you. Am I correct? It's called capacity building training. They take you to a specialized environment and give you skills and tools and enlarge your mind, equip you, teach you, guide you, instruct you, and make you ready. And then they will use you. You a scientist, you are now working with numbers and with people and dealing with loans and making money. But you were, you were doing titration before. So God does not care about whether you, you studied biochemistry or foolishness. Whatever it was in the past, the system is that let the spirit come to you. He will recalibrate you, reconfigure you, reshape you, equip you, build you, teach you, and then he will use you. God is looking for whom he will use to birth the next special children. The devil is preparing the world to have children who have two men, two men as mother and father. Two women as mother and father. That is what the world is pushing for the whole world. And God is pushing, looking for people. He will raise in the order of the mystery of the kingdom. Who will bring up children that will be defiant. Defiant to the culture of destruction in the world. Defiant. Defiant to the agenda of destruction and manipulation and corruption in the world. People will be defiant. Can God trust you to bring forth the people that will resist the culture of Satan in the world? He needs to first of all use, help you, teach you. Every time you hate being taught, you hate being used. 
you make yourself irrelevant to the agenda of God. You have normal children, have normal marriage, have normal business, have normal jobs. But God is still in the business of looking. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. There's nothing emotional here. Just do something. The thing you will do now, if you care, if it makes sense to you, if it pleases you, just stand wherever you are and stretch out your hand. Say, God, take this life. I'm ready to walk with you. I'm ready to learn from you. I'm ready to be helped by your spirit. I want to be used by you. I want to be used in my field. I want to be used. I want to be used in my calling. I want my life to be usable in your hand. I want my marriage to be usable. I want my children to be usable. I want my business to be usable. I want my profession to be usable. This is not an emotional thing. It's very intentional. Minister Magdalene and, the, back, uh, and the, the singers, can you just come up here and prepare new wine on, on the keyboard? Just wherever you are, don't let somebody hear you. And if it makes no sense to you, I trust God, God will give you another help. Say, Lord, I make myself available. I don't want to live a normal life. I want a life that is usable. I don't just want to have business. I want a business that is usable. Lord, I don't just want to marry. I want marriage that is usable. Lord, I just don't want to have children. I want to be used by you to, to bring up children. Lord, I just don't want to make wealth. I don't just want to be in government and politics. I want to be used. Lift up your two hands wherever you are. That's God, why God sent me. That God will find somebody to help. Say, Lord, please help me and use me. Help me and use me. Help me and use me. Don't pass me by, Lord. I know I'm stubborn, but help me and use me. I know my, my heart is dull, but help me and use me. I know I am weak. Please, Lord, help me and use me. I know, I know my story and my past not very beautiful, but use me. Help me and use me. Please, don't let my past discourage you. Don't, don't abandon me to myself. Help me and use me. Help me and use me. Please help me and use me. Please, wherever you are, pray. Just speak like you are crying. Just speak like it hurts you. Please. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Wherever you are, cry. Help me and use me. Help me and use me. Help me and use me. Please help me and use me. Help me and use me. Help me and use me. Lord, please don't allow me to continue in irrelevance. Help me and use me in wealth, in my career, in my profession. Forgive me for my lack of availability. Say, Lord, I cannot help myself. Help me and use me. Don't let me be useless to your kingdom. Help me and use me. 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 Somebody who has to be used by God has to be teachable. Has to be hungry for God. Has to be a God seeker. You must be a God seeker to be used by God. You must be taught by God. Counseled by God. Led by God. Guided by God. Brought forth and brought up by God. To be used by God. Prayer does not make any man usable by God. It is being brought up. Being brought forth. Begotten and brought up. Equipped, raised, built by God. And he does that by the Spirit. Please talk to God. 
Tell him, take sin from me and use me. Take sin. What sin is it that is holding on to you? The sin of lie, of deceit, the sin of immorality, adultery, fornication, defilement, pornography. What is it? Is it drugs? Whatever it is, say, Lord, take from me. Take this from me. Take this useless relationship. Take this useless corrupt connection. Give me another life. Give me help and use me. In the crossing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soul I now surrender You were breaking new ground So I yield to you unto your careful hand When I trust you I don't need to understand Make me your vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine. In the pressing, in the crushing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground So we sing Make me a vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever You want me to be God, I can be with nothing But all you
just offer your heart to Jesus. Offer your hearts to Jesus. If you have never surrendered, tell him, I lay down my old life. I lay down my old heart. I lay down everything old. I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my righteousness. I receive your death for my own death. I receive your resurrection for my new life. I receive your spirit for my breath. I receive your history for mine. Replace the old. Be the replacement of the old. Say, Jesus, be the replacement of my ancestry, my history, my story. Everyone in this house, whether you have ever known Jesus or not, let today be a fresh beginning, new wine. Tell him, Lord, be my new wine. Wherever you are, just speak to him. I say, I need a refreshment from you. I need newness. Wherever you are, just ask him for a new outpouring in your life. Say, so whatever I had lost, whatever of your gift, whatever of your blessing, whatever of your life, whatever of your strength that I had lost, whatever of your virtue I had lost, please visit me again. Opportunities lost. Visions lost. Gifts lost. Abilities lost. is here and that to bless us with the spirits quickening fire see the cloud already mending words to draw the grateful shot please expect this touch God is here. Abandon yourself. Tell him, please just visit me. Give me another chance. I want to be used by you. With the spirit. I want to be clothed by you. Quickening power. I want to be equipped by you. See the cloud already bending. Waits to draw the grateful shine. the shaft of blessing for we are waiting we are waiting oh revive the heart of all God is here we feel his presence in this calm, secreted place, but we need the so refreshing of His free, unbounded grace. Let it come, oh Lord, we pray. Let the shores of blessing. Oh, then believing, bring him all one desire that is love may now be kindled till it's flame each heart inspired. Let it
blessing for we are waiting we are waiting oh revive the hearts of all let it go
prophets let the prophets come alive again let see us come alive again let teachers come alive again let counselors come alive let warriors come alive again let the mighty come alive you see i'll pour my spirit upon all flesh awaken the army 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 awaken the forces 
Awaken their divisions. Awaken their 24. Awaken them. Receive something from above. Lord, send new fire. Send new instruction. Replace the old God with new fire. Change things in this house. Change things in this car. Change things in homes and families. Change things in Ministries, in businesses, in offices. Halabon da brayan do talamati. Lelebon de pa la lebon de le helebota. Lebra so mande keta. Mande lebra la bosse prekato. Mende li abra lo bata. Awaken, 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 awaken. Let the dead come back to life. Let the dead see. Let the dead see. Dumb here. Let cripples walk. Let insanity go. Let chains be broken.
Renew hearts, <laughs> renew souls, arrest those who have not yet known you, arrest hearts, take, take souls back, release captives, break yokes, break addiction, release, 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 come back to life, come back to life, come back to life, come out from the water. Come out, come out. Be released from witchcraft. Be released from the marriage. Be released. tired of standing but you may be seated but don't stop talking ask for help ask for rain in the time of latter rain healing rain is falling now it's coming, it's coming near and poor weak and strong it's bringing mercy it won't be long healing rain start again healing rain is coming down it's coming closer Lost and found tears of joy and tears of shame I washed forever in Jesus' name healing rain it comes with fire. So let it fall and take us high. Healing rain, I'm not afraid to be washed in heaven's rain. Lift your hands, let us return to the mercy seat where time begins. 
Invite healing into the church. Let there be healing, spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, marital. Let there be healing. Be healed in your spirit. Be healed in your soul. Be healed in your body. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Receive children. Wombs receive children. Breakthrough in the house. Breakthrough. 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 Stand up and speak breakthrough. Break out from limit. Stand up and break out from limit. There is help to break out. There is help to break through. There is help to break through. Say, I break through. I break through. I break through. I break through. Speak it out. Command it. I break through. Mountains fall. I break through. Yokes fall. I break through. Walls fall. I break through. I break through. I break through. I break through. I break to exercise your spirit, exercise your faith, exercise your strength. Say, I break through, 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 I break through. I break through, I break through, I break through, I break through, I break through. Thank you, Father. Can you just lift up those two and just say thank you? Speak words of gratitude as you wave. Speak words of gratitude. Speak words of gratitude as you wave. Speak words of gratitude. Speak words of thanksgiving as you wave. Speak words of praise as well. Just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for visits. Thank you for visitation. Thank you for refreshing. Thank you for strength. Thank you for help. Lord, thank you for help. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Lord, 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 thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Just be seated. Thank you, Lord.